The QMK docs have pretty good info for us Windows users wanting to get to grips with QMK at a deeper level than the web configurators allow. But I wanted to make this guide so that the whole process was here on my channel to complement the videos I have featuring QMK compatible keyboards. Using the command line tools can be daunting for some people and while it isn't really anything to worry too much about, I think a visual guide will be helpful. As a former Arch Linux user, I'm somewhat familiar with the command line. So what do you say we give it a bash? Head over to the MSYS2 website and download the installer that is appropriate for your operating system. So for me, that's the x86-64 installer and install it as you would any other application. So this installer is only capable of installing MSYS2, updating the pre-install packages and installing required packages. So we need to go through quite a few steps before we can start using QMK. You can start MSYS2 from the start menu now. I'd pin it to the taskbar since we'll be opening and closing it a few times. We'll be using the awesome Pac-Man to manage our updates and deal with everything we need to get us up and running. This is our first command. Pac-Man hyphen capital S Y U. So type that in exactly as it appears, paying attention to upper and lowercase letters. This command will tell Pac-Man to update its copy of the database and check the repository for updates to the pre-install packages. Once that done, you'll need to quit MSYS2. This is the most confusing step in the process since, for me at least, it wouldn't respond to me clicking the red X on the window and I couldn't get it to close. The message is quite clear in telling you that you must quit, but I couldn't. You can try pressing Alt F4, but I had to resort to killing the process at this point. I'll update this step if anybody can tell me what I did wrong, but everything else went smoothly after that. So once you've killed MSYS2, uh, open it again and type the next command. Pacman hyphen capital S U. So this will prompt a whole load of updates to appear. Once that's done, close and restart MSYS2 one more time, just to be sure, and repeat the previous command, the pacman hyphen S U. If you press the up arrow on your keyboard, it should appear there, saving you from having to type it out. There should be nothing to update this time, and that means you're all good to go. So you should leave MSYS2 open, as we'll be back in a bit. Okay, so the next step is to get a fresh copy of the QMK firmware on your machine by downloading a copy from GitHub. Unzip the file to somewhere convenient for you and then rename the folder to remove the word master. Okay, so next in the MSYS2 terminal, you're going to type the next command. cd space forward slash c forward slash QMK underscore firmware. So if you unzip the file somewhere else, you'll need to input that location instead. So you're now in the QMK directory. We need to install a lot of things here, but most of the process is automated and you'll only need to confirm things. So enter the following command. util forward slash msys2 underscore install dot sh. So there's going to be a few prompts, but it's pretty straightforward. So prompt one, most of this stuff might have already been installed and is up to date, so it'll just be skipped. Just press enter and wait. Prompt two, you can just press enter here too. Prompt three, there'll be a really long list of stuff here. In my case, it was about 190 megabytes. Just press Y, then enter, and packages will be downloaded, checked, and then installed. Prompt four is the USB drivers. Press A and then enter here, since installing all the drivers is the safest option for all use cases. I missed the pop-up asking for the admin password here and spent five minutes wondering what was going on before I noticed. So enter your admin password and another terminal window will open up and a huge list of drivers will be installed. So prompt five is the AVR toolchain, essential. Uh, press yes and enter. Prompt 6 is the ARM tool chain. Probably not essential for most people, but you know, for the sake of complete completeness on this video, uh, we're going to press yes here too. 
This is a big one. And then there's a whoosh, figurative, as packages are inflated and directories are created left, right and centre. It's pretty exciting, really. So the seventh and final prompt is to add a line to your bash RC file so that commands execute properly when you try and flash keyboards. So just press Y and enter here as well. And you're done. There are some more steps that are optional that I consider maybe quality of life stuff or cosmetic changes. That'll be in another video, as will the uh, compiling and flashing process.